Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Carl Wacker, and I am with our admissions office here at the Hamilton campus at Gordon-Conwell. Thank you for joining us for our MAKO informational webinar. We're so glad that you've taken the time to learn about some of the exciting new changes that we're having in the MAKO program as we strive towards KCREP accreditation. And we hope that the presentation today and the discussion is engaging and helpful to you as you uh, either continue to discern your fit at Gordon-Conwell or as you prepare to attend here in the fall. So thank you truly for taking the time. Uh, I'm joined today by two of our um, guests from the MAKO program. First on my right uh, here is Dr. Karen Mason, mm -hmm. who's the director of our MAKO program here at the Hamilton campus. How are you doing, Dr. Mason? Great, yeah, so glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're also joined by Shiri Messina, who's our <laughs> program administrator for the MAKO program here at Hamilton as well. How are you doing, Sherry? Good, good. Very exciting to meet these people at some point. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you both for taking the time. Uh, before we launch into the discussion, just a quick note about how this presentation will be handled logistically. Uh, we're using the Zoom platform, which means that uh, you can see and hear us, but we've disabled your video and audio for the presentation. However, we would still love for you to interact with us as you have questions or comments. Um, you're, you're welcome to use the chat feature. Um, if you're on a computer, you can find that at the bottom of your uh, screen and just chat right in there. We have that pulled up on our screen and we can see your questions. Uh, we will have Q&A at the end, um, but you can also ask questions at any point throughout the presentation and we'll try to address those as we go to make this as helpful for you as it can be. Um, so we're, just in terms of the overview, we're gonna have some brief opening comments about our KCREP accreditation process. What is KCREP? Um, why are we pursuing it? How does it impact you as a student? Uh, then we'll have a brief PowerPoint to go over some of the specifics of the changes in the program, and then we'll end with the Q&A. So again, thank you for taking the time to join us, and I think we'll go ahead and launch into the discussion. So like I mentioned a moment ago, and either one of you can weigh in on this or both, um, I think it would be helpful to start with what is KCREP? Why are we pursuing it as an institution? And how do you anticipate that it will benefit our students in the long run? So mm -hmm. whoever wants to jump in on that. Sure, I, th I think we both can mm -hmm. jump in. So thanks so much, Carl, for hosting us. We really appreciate that. and appreciate the chance to just tell prospective students about KCREP and changes to the program. So thanks. Absolutely. So uh, KCREP is a very important accreditation for counseling programs. So counseling programs can seek out accreditation, which is what we're doing. And uh, there are many benefits uh, to students, potential benefits to students, some of them being uh, licensure benefits, which I'll let Shiri talk about because um, Shiri will help students in that licensure process. Um, but uh, there are many other uh, important pieces. So for instance, some states require you to graduate from a KCREP accredited program in order to get licensed in their state. Uh, so, you know, it, there's definitely that advantage. Uh, the other advantage is that some insurance companies won't let you provide services under their insurance unless you have graduated from a KCREP accredited program. So that's another good reason. Um, and uh, just the last piece is just that it uh, definitely uh, creates a, a, a standard for a counseling program, which, um, uh, you know, just has nothing but benefits in terms of reaching those particular standards. But sure, you, I wonder if you just want to add some things about mm -hmm. licensure. Yeah. So, I mean, first to say it's an acronym, the KCREP. So it's Counseling and Counseling Related Educational Programs. So when we say KCREP, that's what we're referring to as an accreditation. Um, but licensure wise, I mean, Karen already touched on this, um, but I basically what she was saying was states are requiring it. And even if they aren't requiring it, many of them are looking to see that you have KCREP standards minimally and or that you are potentially coming. That's their preference is that you come from KCREP. So the helpful part about this too is when you're switching states, unfortunately at this point, not every state has the exact same requirements, although they're very similar. So the difference is usually maybe a class or some kind of small change to the practicum internship piece. 
but they do are more and more asking, there are more and more states asking for a KCREP accredited program. And what that helps with, whether you're switching states and or doing a license in a state, is that basically it smooths the process through because once they see that you're coming from a KCREP accredited school, they just stamp you through. So you kind of, they check that off their checklist and you're, that piece of it is taken care of. Um, so that's a huge help because right now sometimes it's a back and forth with the licensure boards proving that we have KCREP standards. Um, and so it takes longer and the process can be sort of up and down that way. But once we have that accreditation, that will no longer be the case for you. And to follow up, I think all of that is very helpful. Are you able to share sort of where we're at in the process and the timeline, mm -hmm. if there is one, mm -hmm. on actually becoming officially accredited through KCREP? Mm -hmm. Sure, absolutely. So it's a, a multi-year process getting to the you know point of being accredited. And we are, uh, let's see, July 11th, 12th, and 13th is when their board will actually look at all of our materials and make the decision about accreditation. So we are just, uh, what is that, a month and a half away? away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so we've made it through, you know, self-study and responses to their questions and then a site visit and right. we are currently making our response, writing our response to their site visit response their site visit report. So I mean, it's just a back and forth process right. over years, two years about, I think we've, I mm -hmm. mean, we've been working on it bit by bit yes. for several years, but really two years uh, just in a very focused. That's way. right. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. hopefully this fall, if everything goes according to plan, right. is that, um, and, but there might continue to be some, some back and forth. That's um, right. And there has been a lot of work from a lot of departments and especially from our, our counseling team. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but it has really required a whole village. Right. To write this, <laughs> and so um, to then kind of preface our presentation portion, in order to prepare and, and continue to go through this process, we've had to make some changes to our counseling program to align with these KCREP accreditation mm -hmm. standards. Mm -hmm. um, so our team has prepared a brief PowerPoint just to overview some of those specific changes to the program. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to go ahead and jump into that now. Sure. Okay. Um, Perfect. And we'll go through the, the specific content, and then at the end we'll have a brief time for Q&A. Um, and it can be Q&A about KCREP, but it can also be admissions-related questions if you have any of those right now uh, while we're doing the webinar. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, feel free to begin putting those questions in the chat um, if you do have them. So mm -hmm. allow me to go ahead and pull up the screen share. Just give me one moment here. Great. So as you can see here, we have uh, some various changes to the MAKO program. And I'm going to go ahead and go over to the next slide. Uh, we've done our introductions already. Maybe it would be just helpful to just briefly, if you could uh, speak to how long each of you have been with Gordon Conwell, um, and then this is from an admission standpoint, but maybe like if you had to give a 30 second, you know, highlight, what, what do you think really makes the counseling program at Gordon Conwell unique, very brief from your perspective? Mm -hmm. And then after that, we'll jump into the, the curriculum of the presentation. So sure. why don't you go first, Dr. Mason? Sure, yeah. So I, I have, I'm just finishing my 13th year, although I have taught some adjunct uh, classes at Gordon Conwell before I started full time, but full time I've been here 13 years, and uh, my uh, my response to what makes Gordon Conwell unique is that we help you integrate counseling and theology. Mm -hmm. So our students take uh, Bible and theology classes as a foundation, and based on that foundation, we really focus on helping you uh, integrate theology and uh, counseling. Uh, but at the same time, I should say, you know, we're preparing you to become licensed in your field if that's what your career goal is. We'll help you uh, be ready to minister in a church. So we're going to prepare you professionally very well. This is an academically rigorous program, but really focused on that integrative piece. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, started here as a student, so I went through the MAKO program myself in 2001, and then I've been in the office since 2003. So started out as a student worker, then became the administrative assistant, and then um, I think it's been five years uh, 
maybe even a less, little less, but as the program administrator. So that's kind of my background. Um, I'm going to pretty much say the same thing. When I was looking for a program, I was looking for a program that wasn't so clinical, there was no God, um, and wasn't so biblical, there was no clinical. And I think we do a really good job of having your theology inform your practice. Um, and I think it is a unique environment because we are within a seminary. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a unique way to also have further input with our faith and biblically and theologically. And those discussions happen naturally because you're in the seminary environment. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank and, you both for speaking to that. Sorry, go ahead. And just to add to that, and you know, you have a chance to take classes from the, uh, really a world-class faculty mm, in Bible and theology, which is another reason why locating us in a seminary really mm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks for speaking to that. And so then moving along here to the beginning of our changes, um, if either one of you wants to jump in on uh, this mm -hmm. first change mm -hmm. here. Sure. Well, one of the biggest changes that we needed to make in order to align ourselves with KCREP is that we discontinued our track. So it used to be that we, we were, we've always been a counseling program, but it used to be you could take either a mental health counseling track or you could take a marriage and family track. We have since had to discontinue these tracks. We are now just a counseling program, which we've always been, without these two tracks. But you can still take those marriage and family classes, but now they're, at, they're electives. All right, so you can take family systems, um, couples counseling, family therapy. You can take these classes, but they're no longer, uh, they no longer result in a particular track. So I, I would say that's one of the, uh, that's just a significant change for us in terms of uh, discontinuing the tracks. But in essence, the program looks pretty much the way it used to look like. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I, I just want to clarify that your diplomas have always said the same thing. Yes. So it, it does not change your diploma. It, it has always said master's in counseling. It has never said your track on the diploma. So that doesn't change. I think sometimes people have questions around that. Um, it's not, you're not changing from a master's in mental health to a master's in marriage and family. It's you're changing, I mean, you're not changing anything diploma wise. So you're still graduating with a master's in counseling. So just clarifying that piece, just because people ask me. So another change that has happened, and that's probably one of the more recent changes, is they have wanted us to show that we have a plan of study, which that means that we have to um, kind of have a cohorty uh, sort of um, format in that there are specific courses that students have to take in specific sequence um, based on the semester they're in. So there will be two courses each semester that are required. This does not mean that you cannot take electives as you want to, um, but the required courses will have to follow a specific sequence. Um, so incoming for the fall, every student would have to take intro to counseling and professional standards. And this is a new requirement as we have, in the past we've had requirements and prerequisites, but we haven't had the same kind of sequencing. So that's really the big change in terms of that aspect. And in terms of helping with the academic advising piece that I do, all of that is reiterated, um, both in the MACO orientation as well as students meeting with me to kind of plan out their study um, while they're here. So that's one of the big changes. Um, and bear with us because these are changes for us too. Um, and then the other piece is that in order to be able to graduate from a KCREP accredited program, you cannot be transferring courses from schools that aren't KCREP accredited. So in other words, a person could not previously could have maybe transferred something from a non-accredited program into our program. However, as a KCREP program, we can't do that. That means that if you are not able then to transfer courses from the Boston campus counseling program because they do not have the KCREP accredited program. The Charlotte program for counseling um, from Gordon Conwell too, hopefully will also be KCREP accredited. They're basically in the same place as we are. And that would mean that courses from them would be acceptable. 
Um, so that's another big change for mm -hmm. students coming mm -hmm. in in terms of transferring courses. And that new requirement applies to the counseling courses, but does it Correct. also apply to the theology no. courses? No. Yes, you can transfer those. Right, so that's if right. there's uh, theology courses in your core um, that you'd like to take at one of our other campuses or through the BTI, um, you know, work with our team to make sure it fits, but those you could still do, but it's the counseling courses that are now restricted. Like well, only K -crep schools. We would really encourage you to take classes in Boston, you know, just it's such a rich learning environment. Mm -hmm. We would love for students to do that. But definitely. Yeah, but that the the accreditation means that we need to uh, accept only equivalent classes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. 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 So Okay. Well, um uh, a few other changes uh that um uh, let's see. Let me just let me just stop right here and just address that question. Oh yeah, that's, that's a good page. question. Yeah, you just got uh, uh, messaged in here. So, are any of the consortium schools in Boston KCREP accredited? Not the not the BTI schools, but there are other schools in Boston that are KCREP accredited. So, if you go to the uh, so, for instance, Bridgewater State is KCREP accredited. Um, uh, University of Boston. One part of their one part of the university is KCREP accredited. So there are a few. Uh, if you go to the KCREP website, you can actually type in uh, programs and type in Massachusetts, and you'll be able to see which programs are KCREP accredited. So uh, not the BTI schools, but there are other schools that are KCREP accredited. Yeah, mm -hmm. great yeah. question. Thank you yeah. for asking that. That's helpful yeah. to clarify. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, one of the last changes that we'll mention here, and by the way, there are some possible other changes that could emerge as time goes by, but uh, so let me just make that disclaimer. But at the same time, one of the last changes we wanted to talk about is just some things that you'll have to uh, do as part of your practicum experience, practicum and internship experiences. So your field experiences are experiences that you're going to have at sites off of off site of Gordon Conwell and and while you're at those sites there are a few things that you're going to have to do one of them is that uh, you'll have to um, record part of a session and bring that in as part of a case discussion you'll also have to join a counseling organization like the American Counseling Association you'll have to uh, attend a conference or a training, uh, and you'll also have to lead a counseling group in that field experience. So there are some things that are gonna be part of that field experience and also part of, we're putting it all together in one category of developing that counselor identity. So there are some pieces and parts that Sherry will tell you about uh, in that new student orientation when you start. So mm -hmm. these things will all be listed out in the student handbook, by the way, the MAKO student handbook. Mm -hmm. Now, do you yeah. want to add something to that? Um, no, I, I think that, you know, a lot of the information students aren't aware, but if you go under academics um, on the Gordon Conwell website, um, our student handbook is there. Our annual report is there. Um, our objectives are there. Um, so a lot of times people aren't aware to keep clicking through um, and do the Mako Hamilton portion, which will answer many of those questions as well. Of course, I will reiterate all these things. And um, just so you know, we're not expecting you to jump into a practicum internship right off the bat. In fact, there are requirements prerequisites that you have to take before you can do any of those. Um, so that's not something we're dealing with right off the bat. Um, the other thing that I will say I'm asked about a lot is um, the academic advising piece. And um, I am happy to meet with you individually as well as thankfully, one thing that's kind of nice for the counseling department is that we generally have a course sequencing that we follow pretty religiously um, as far as when courses are offered. And all required courses will be taught every single year. Electives are taught every other year. So we work on that so that we can help you plan sort of the whole length of your time here, um, helping you kind of choose what courses might be a better fit. 
Right. So, um, yeah, that's my response to that, I guess. And if you've joined us as an incoming student, you've already decided to attend, um, maybe Sh Sherry or Dr. Mason, could you speak to specifically, like, what does orientation look like? Is there a segment of the broader orientation, a couple of days that's specific for they go? Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to have the dates, per se, but I think it'd be helpful for them right, to know right, when right, that right, would right. take place. Yeah. So. I was going to say, Sherry does the orientation, so mm -hmm. and we all come, so you can have a chance to meet us, but do you want to talk about the orientation? Yeah. So. The orientation is usually part of the orientation week. Mm -hmm. um, there is a segment, a two hour segment of a counseling orientation where all the students, incoming masters in counseling students will meet as well as master of divinity and masters of counseling students. So if, if someone is looking for that dual degree, um, they are also invited to this specific orientation. Um, and obviously there are going to maybe be different questions for you depending on if that's what you're looking for and how those tracks dovetail. Um, but then basically I walk you through the whole thing. So we talk about all the requirements, our objectives starting out, what classes will look like, the professors will introduce themselves so you get to meet them. Um, pretty much the whole, you know, what professional seminars are, practicum internships. Um, it's pretty much a handheld walkthrough. Right. Um, and then we also have our student association students show up and kind of talk a little bit about uh, other extracurricular things that we try to do, conferences we have on campus. Um, so it's a pretty, I would say, comprehensive overview. Right. Yeah, that's great. And I just wanted to have you give a little more details because I think that's something to look forward to. Um, obviously, these are a lot of changes that we're still working through, and so we don't expect you to have it all put together. But that's what the orientation is for, is to address these on a deeper level. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. if you're an incoming student, that's something uh, to be looking out for. Right. I'll, I'll just add, Carl, uh, I had a student once tell me that uh, Shiri is the secret weapon of the MAKO department. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, everybody that's makes it through nice. because, you know, <laughs> Shiri will make sure you get through. So. I will try my best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely. Yeah. Well, let yeah. me uh, take us off of our screen share here. Um, so as another follow-up, I just wanted to share, you know, some of you, rather than being incoming students, might still be prospective students. Um, and if that's the case, we would love to have you come visit Gordon-Conwell. Uh, we welcome campus visitors most weeks out of the year. And if you go on our website under future students and then visit our campus under the Hamilton campus, you can schedule a campus visit. Uh, you can see the dates that are available. Um, we can usually provide up to two nights of housing complimentary on campus as well as transportation to and from the uh, Boston Logan Airport or train station and provide some of your meals as well. Um, and in the context of that campus visit, we could also mm -hmm. try to schedule an individual time for you uh, with Shiri mm -hmm. and hopefully give you a chance to sit in on some counseling classes as well. Um, so if that's mm -hmm. where you find yourself, just wanted you to know, um, we do really try to encourage people to take the time to visit and we mm -hmm. do our best to roll out the red carpet for you and um, help you to feel welcomed and experience what Gordon Conwell is like for yourself here in person. Yes, and you're always welcome uh, to get my information from admission, and I do a lot of email back and forth with prospective students as well as phone calls, so I'm happy to be a resource in whatever way I can help um, in understanding or answering some of your questions or concerns around the program itself. Same here. So we'll send out uh, <laughs> contact information after the presentation concludes. We do have a little bit of time here at the end for more specific question and answers. So if you have any remaining questions, I know we, we covered a lot of content fairly quickly, um, either about the changes that are happening, you know, or just from an admission standpoint, uh, we'd be happy to try to answer some of those. Uh, as a reminder, you can just type those into the chat, um, and you know, we'd be happy to address some of those here as we move towards a close. Um, that being said, as uh, our visitors think about any additional questions, oh, looks like we did have one that just came through. Uh, what are the two required classes for the spring semester for this year? Mm -hmm. So that's going to be uh, clinical counseling skills mm -hmm. and psychopathology. Correct. So starting this fall, and I think for some of you incoming students, this is already a little bit of a change from when you spoke to me last. So starting this fall, um, students will be required to take introduction to counseling as well as professional standards. 
It doesn't mean you couldn't also take an elective, but you would have to take those two classes. And then those are prereqs for the spring courses, which are counseling skills and then the psychopathology. Um, so just so you're aware, basically, we're deciding for you in a sense, two classes in the fall, two classes in the spring. Um, and there's a little bit more flexibility. There is a summer course then also that's required. So every semester there will be a specific course sequence required, but it still does allow you to make the choice on electives as well as Gordon Conwell core classes in Bible theology. So you still have some flexibility. And uh, maybe a follow-up question to that. Another student says, I'm an incoming student. Is it possible to meet with an advisor over the summer to prepare for registering for classes? Um, so absolutely. So just get in touch with me. And um, I'm going to be gone for a couple weeks in the summer. But for the most part, I'm around and happy to answer anything that would be helpful, either to meet with me in person or talk on the phone or whatever is best for you. Yeah, and another thing that might be helpful just to note is uh, when you register as an incoming student, your registration is tentative, just your first semester, until orientation. And then you'll go through the orientation for MAKO, and then you'll also have uh, a session with our registration team to just double check everything and make sure that you're checking the right boxes, you're in the right courses, and then your registration will be officially confirmed. So uh, we'll be there with you through the process to, to make sure you get signed up for the right courses. Mm -hmm. Right. And to answer uh, Kim, um, yes, you will get in the MAKO orientation now a course sequencing form. I will talk through that, um, what each semester will look like through the entire time you're here. Um, it will be posted once all of this is kind of finalized. So we're about to put all this information on the web. Um, and obviously, I have it all. So uh, yes, I will. I will have all that information for you. Mm -hmm. We're still running our core sequence, our plan of study through our registrar, and we're having some conversations before we finalize, but that is, that it, we are close to being able to do that. Right. It does not mean that the class times will be changing. So just don't panic if you see the classes and you've already kind of tried to fit your schedule. The class times are not changing. It's just which courses you need to take. Right, and maybe just one more quick clarifying comment about the, the course schedules for the year. This can be a little confusing sometimes. We have actually four terms. We have a fall term that runs September to December. Then we have a January mini term, which some students will use to take courses. Others will take off for different reasons. Those courses are usually one to two week intensives and you fit a whole semester's worth of content in just in January. Mm -hmm. Then our spring runs from February through May. And then over the summer, we have some full summer courses as well as a summer one, two, and summer three terms uh, where there's a variety of intensives offered. Mm -hmm. So there's um, some flexibility in, in when you take classes and how you sequence it. And I think it's uh, just helpful to uh, make sure that that's clear to our incoming students. So. Mm -hmm. And we, we do offer classes in each of those four semester mm -hmm. frameworks. So mm -hmm. yeah, right. good to take advantage of those. Another question that just came in, is it possible to adjust internship lengths to meet other state requirements? I'm from New Hampshire and would like to be licensed in Maine, which requires uh, longer internships. How, so, how long in Maine? Do you know? I don't think it's that much more, but maybe 900. Um, but yes, that is not a problem at all. So I work with students from who are getting licensed all over. Um, the differences are very minimal. Um, and I don't think, I mean, except for maybe one course, um, that there's any difference in between us and Maine, um, if I'm just off the bat remembering. Um, but what will happen then is, for example, if they are requiring you to take a course in addiction, we will make sure that that course is the elective that you take. So you will be ready to get licensed in Maine when you finish this program. Mm -hmm. uh, we will we will help you with practicum internship requirements, with any changes that need to be made, and we will do that up front. Um, and we will do that. I will also help people who are not sure and they're looking at two different states, um, and we can do that too. Great, great question. And we did have another question that came in. Uh, what would you recommend we keep in mind in picking what electives to take? Definitely what Sherry just said. The state in which you're going to get licensed 
always has different requirements. Mm -hmm. Some states require addiction. Some require career domestic violence. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. careers now core. So, so yeah, it just it just depends on the state in which you're going to get licensed. Right, and you have four electives. So I do at the, when I meet with you, I will talk through that with you and say, okay, you know, are there things that are specifically besides the state requirements? Are there things that are of particular importance to you? Mm -hmm. Do you want to work with adolescents? Then you are going to want to take counseling the adolescent. Um, if you want to take marriage and family courses, we want to make sure you're taking the correct electives. So that's basically, it's kind of a combination of requirements for the state as well as your specific um, heart for different things or where you feel God is calling you. And we would think of those up front again, so you do not miss an elective on your way to graduation that you really wanted to take. But if you miss that elective, they can come back after they graduate. Correct. So you can come back once you graduate. And as a MACO Masters in Counseling alumni, the courses would be half price for you. So there is a way to also make up electives that way. And even if you did the elective, which is maybe a requirement for a different um, licensure or maybe a different state, then you uh, could take that half price and it would still work for licensure. So just because you're taking a course post-graduation doesn't mean it, it isn't included in the licensure acceptance. Right. Yeah, that's very helpful. Uh, well, thank you to all of you who took the time to ask questions. Um, hopefully, we were able to make this personalized and helpful. Um, know that if you have any follow-up questions, like I said earlier, I'll pass along contact information mm -hmm. for Shiri and for Dr. Mason, as well as for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you're more than welcome to reach out, call, email, schedule a campus visit. Um, truly, we're here to serve you, and we're excited about what God is doing through our MAKO program mm -hmm. in equipping men and women to serve the church and the world uh, through their uh, desire to serve as counselors. Uh, so thank you all of you for taking yeah, the time. Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate it. Any concluding comments? Boy, we're, we're just uh, very excited to have a chance to hopefully meet you all in person. Uh, mm -hmm. If you go through that process, we'll have a chance to actually interview you face to face with two faculty members. So you'll have a chance to get to know us. We'll have a chance to get to know you. So uh, looking forward to that as an uh, as a possibility. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I would say the same thing. Welcome. I will do my best to help you get through this program and hopefully keep your sanity intact. Um, and then I do send out an email, a welcome email, once I have the list uh, of fall entrances that will also explain a little bit more about what the make orientation will look like, the date, um, as well as any kind of changes that have happened post this semester or during this spring that maybe uh, someone who got accepted in the fall may not fully be aware of. So all of that will come in an email as well as be reiterated in the MAKO orientation. Great. Well, thank you to both of you for yeah, taking the time. Thank you, Carl. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, and as a final conclusionary point, we will also uh, send out a full video of this webinar. Um, it'll take a couple days to get it processed and uploaded to YouTube. But be looking out for that as well if you want to reference it later or pass it along to anyone else. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, feel free to reach out with any questions you may have. So, yeah. Thanks right. so much. Yeah. Thank you. you. Yeah. You got it. Glad right. to have you here. Well, have all a right. great rest of your day, everyone. And uh, we'll be in touch. God bless. Bye-bye.